Kubrick films were often controversial, but that was a major factor in his success. A Clockwork Orange is certainly no exception. It can be a tough watch for many, it is irreverent as well as offensive, but it is also ridiculous and sometimes funny. Malcolm McDowell is magnificent in the role of Alex Delage, and it is he who holds all this mayhem together. It had four Oscar nominations in 1971, including Best Picture, and now for its 50th anniversary, it has been remastered into 4K. Kubrick had emigrated from the USA to England some years before A Clockwork Orange, but perhaps hadn't gained a full understanding of the mindset of this country as it was back then. The backlash to the perceived violence and inferred rape scenes in this film, and the abuse he received as a result, even went so far as death threats. Warner Brothers certainly wanted to maintain a good relationship with Kubrick, as they would like him to continue to make lucrative box office successes for them in the future and so when he requested to withdraw the film from UK distribution, they agreed, and that withdrawal is a big reason why A Clockwork Orange became so notorious in this country. It should be noted that it had been on general release for over a year when it was withdrawn, but it would remain unavailable until after Kubrick's death. He died in March 1999, before his last film Eyes Wide Shut was released. A Clockwork Orange was given a 30th anniversary re-release to UK cinemas, and this is the 35mm trailer to promote that re-release. No words, just fast-cut imagery set to music, the William Tell Overture, that encapsulates this crazy film within its short running time. This was a low-budget film, and Kubrick did say that he had to make a low-budget movie to prove that he actually could. 2001 A Space Odyssey had gone over budget and not been an immediate success, but despite some truly awful critical reviews, it soon started to find its audience and has since become accepted as one of the most influential and most important films ever made. 2001 cost an estimated $12 million to make, but A Clockwork Orange was a lowly $2.2 million. It grossed $26.5 million at the worldwide box office. I'm still not sure what I think of the film. It is a different type of film, but probably best so you know what you're getting into before sitting down to watch it, otherwise it may seem a little too surreal. Whatever, it is certainly another influential Kubrick film with some unique and influential imagery. Take a look at Walter Hill's gang film The Warriors, 1979, to see some of that influence. The main rival gang in The Warriors looks strikingly similar to the gang referred to in Malcolm McDowell's narration as Billy Boy and his four droogs. The whole story is narrated by Malcolm McDowell playing Alex Delage, who was actually reading passages from the original 1962 novel by Anthony Burgess, with just Stanley Kubrick there doing the recording. McDowell's opening scene sees him giving us, the audience, a visible greeting by looking straight down the camera. He and his three gang members are in a Corova milk bar which serves drug-laced milk in preparation for a night of ultraviolence. Music is another important factor of the film, classical music. This time it is mainly Ludwig van Beethoven, and Alex does have an appreciation of Ludwig van as he refers to him several times in the narrative. The classical music score had been an important ingredient of 2001, and therefore this was possibly something of a carryover into this film. Sex, violence and classical music is the basis of the film until Alex is caught and sent to prison, where he volunteers for a new violence aversion therapy, which, if successful, will see him released. The aversion therapy itself is a form of torture, and it's a famous scene again. Perhaps this was a reason for the title of the film Eyes Wide Shut, as Kubrick sought a playful homage to what he had achieved years earlier with this film. Alex successfully gets through the aversion therapy and is released back into the world a changed man. Or is he? It is another film that is not suitable for children. It's a violent sex comedy really and should not be taken too seriously. It's also a science fiction film and similar in some ways to the look and feel of 1984. The gritty, dowdy London look of 1971 is perfectly captured, although we're never told when this film is supposed to be set, 
presumably the near future. Law and order are all but gone, and Alex and his three droogs are seemingly able to do as they please. By 1971 standards, this film was pushing the boundaries of acceptability. By today's standards, it appears more like an experimental film made by an avant-garde director with a penchant for naked girls and for showing casual sex, as well as inferring violent sex. A couple of women are attacked with the intention of rape, but although horrific, it's not as graphic as the sort of thing we are sometimes shown these days. The recent 4K disc release comes with the original 166 to 1 aspect ratio, which was the standard non-anamorphic ratio in the UK at the time of this film's 1971 release. The Blu-ray has the same aspect ratio, but I think this is the same Blu-ray that has been available for years, with a different disc face printed onto it to match that of the 4K. There are extras on the Blu-ray, but all have been available for some time previously. On the 4K there is just a commentary track with Malcolm McDowell and film historian Nick Redman, and from the little I've heard of this so far, it does sound interesting and informative. There is also a special 3-disc pack that has an additional extras disc, as well as a booklet and other collectibles. Image quality on the Blu-ray was never brilliant, but thankfully appears to be much better on the new 4K, although it has to be borne in mind that this film did not exactly have the most stunning picture quality when it was made. Parts of it have an almost 16mm quality, but this was shot on 35mm. It seems that this 16mm look is down to the use of extreme wide-angle lenses for many of the shots, and low light levels in the interiors, usually the lighting coming from a single source visible in the frame. These wide-angle low-light sequences tend to have generated a blurry nature to the scenes where they were used, and this can leave an overall poor impression. However, much of the film was shot conventionally, and those shots can look really good. Look into the backgrounds rather than facial close-ups to get a better impression of how good the transfer is, and you should see that any evident degrading of the image quality is because you are looking at a wide shot. These days the extreme wide-angle lenses are better, but Kubrick appears to have been experimenting with them, and the lighting, for this film. Interestingly, his next film, Barry Lyndon, would take the low light levels even further. As usual, it is the high dynamic range, the HDR, that makes the obvious difference between the Blu-ray and the 4K, but even so the colour is fairly muted, apart from some deliberately colourful scenes. There are two options for the soundtrack, DTS HD 5.1 or mono. I opted for the DTS track, as modern audiences tend to prefer to select multi-channel sound when available, but I felt this was sometimes too harsh, possibly due to the poor acoustics at some of the locations, combined with the early use of Sennheiser radio voice microphones. I re-watched the opening of the film in mono, and this seemed a little more pleasing on the ears, which concurs with Clark Teddles in Australia, who has just reviewed this same film, but has the 4K special edition, which contains a steelbook and other collectibles, so I'll put a link to his video in the description below. Whichever soundtrack you opt for, bear in mind that this is not going to be the best sounding film that you have ever heard. So to summarise, this is not going to be the best 4K release in your collection, but I feel the image quality on the disc is a good representation of the original 35mm prints. Certainly judging by the 35mm trailer, the 4K transfer looks like an accurate reproduction. If you're one of the many fans of this film, then you will not be disappointed. If you are simply interested in finally seeing this controversial film from 1971, then just bear in mind it is not of the quality of most 35mm transfers so far issued on 4K, and that should ensure you will still be happy with your purchase. I would like to thank Clark Teddles because his enthusiasm for this film piqued my interest to see the 4K, and also to John at Mondo Celovec Movies, as A Clockwork Orange is his favourite film, and he has just recently uploaded his own videos on the 4K release, so I'll link to those videos and Clark's in the description below. Until the next video, bye bye for now.